Hello, everyone. In this video, we shall discuss the basic concepts of functions and relations. These two concepts would involve the variables x and y, where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. In the real world, there are a lot of relations and functions that exist. So one could be that our weight in pounds could be dependent on the food intake or the number of calories that we take in our body. Or it could be that the price of a house would depend on its land area. So what are relations and functions? So let's define a relation first. So a relation from a set X to a set Y is a rule that pairs each element x in the set x to at least one element y in the set y. Now, this relation is also defined as a set of ordered pairs x comma y. So anything that pairs um, elements of x and elements of y would be considered a relation. Now, there are different representations of um, relation. So it could be in the mapping diagram form. So for example, we have the set X and its elements are inside the following. So let's say we have one, two, and three. And then we have the set Y with elements four, five, and six. And then we have the following pairing. So the element one in X is paired to the element four in Y. The element two in X is paired with the element five in Y and the element three in X is paired with the element six in, in Y. So this one is considered as a one-to-one -one relations. Now there are other types of relations. Um, one of them would be the many-to-one relation. So whenever we have the following mapping diagram, uh, let's say we have one and negative one will be paired to Y equals one. And then we have another um, element in the set X that will be paired to an element in the set Y. So this one is a many to one relation because there are two values of X that is paired to one element in the set Y. Now, another type of relation would be the one to many relation. And in this case, it's possible that there will be an element in X that will be paired to more than one element in why? So all of these are relations because it satisfies or they satisfy the definition that um, X is paired to at least one element in the set Y. Now, um, relations can also be represented in terms of sets of ordered pairs. So for example, if we have R to be the set that contains the following ordered pairs. So this one is a relation. And then it can be in the table of values form. So for example, if we have X and Y, so we write them as um, row headings. And then we have the values of X in the first row and the corresponding values of Y would be in the second row. So this is also a relation. Now, um, relations can also be represented in terms of an equation or a formula. So for example, we have y equals to x minus one. It could be that y squared is equal to x. And then also relations can be represented in graphical form because graphs are just set of points that are plotted in the Cartesian plane. Now, so since we already know about relations, now let, let us define what is a function. So a function f is a relation from a set X containing input values small x to a set Y that includes output values small y such that each element in X is paired to exactly one element in the set Y. So to be for a relation to be a function, we want to avoid having an element X that is paired to more than one element in the set Y. So we're avoiding this scenario in functions. So which means the one-to-many relation that 
uh, we saw earlier in the previous slide is not considered a function. So only the one-to-one -one relation and the many-to-one -one relation are considered functions. And then we denote a function using the notation f, so which is read as a function from the set x to the set y, or it can be written as y is equal to f of x. So we read this as y is a function of x. Now we can also view functions in the following way. No? If an input value x corresponds to more than one output value y, then the relation is not a function. So which means, again, we want to avoid having an element x that will be paired to two or more values in the set y. Okay, now, let's have an example. So a mapping diagram, uh, it's a diagram that illustrates how input values x are related to output values y. So it exhibits a function whenever each x has exactly one arrow branching out to y. So if there will be an x value that will have arrows or more than one arrows branching out going to y, then the mapping diagram does not represent a function. It's only a relation. So for example, in this particular mapping diagram, this is the set x and this is the set y. So we call this the function f from set x to set y. So as we can see, each element in the set x only contains one arrow branching out from it. So which means that this mapping diagram is a function. However, in the second mapping diagram, if this is the set x and this is the set y, then we call this the uh, relation from g to x to, uh, from g relation g from x to y. So as we can see that there is an element x or in, an element in x uh, wherein there are more than one arrow branching out from it. So which means that this is uh, just a relation. Now for a set of ordered pairs, an ordered pair shows the relationship between x and y in the form x comma y where x is the first coordinate and y is the second coordinate. So we also refer the coordinate as the x coordinate and the y coordinate respectively. A set of distinct ordered pairs x comma y is a function if no two ordered pairs have the same first coordinates. So for the following example, this is a set of ordered pairs having, having three um, elements. And as we can see, uh, the x coordinates are all different. So which means that this relation is considered a function. However, the second set of ordered pairs is just a relation because there are two ordered pairs having the same x coordinate. So this one is just a relation. Next, again, a relation can also be represented in terms of a table of values. Now, this table shows the relationship between x and y in row or in column format. A set of ordered pairs can be transformed in table format and vice versa. A table of values shows a function if each value of x is distinct. So in the first table here, this one represents a function because all the x values are different. And the second one is just a relation because there are two pairs of x values that are equal. So in this case, if we, if we convert this into a set of ordered pairs, this will be the set containing 3 comma negative 3, 3 comma 3, 1 comma negative 1, and one comma one. So in, in terms of set of ordered pairs, this is not a function because there are two ordered pairs having the same x coordinate. Next, for graphs, an ordered pair x comma y 
may be plotted on the Cartesian plane. So a set of ordered pairs is considered a set of points on the Cartesian plane. So this set of points will form the graph of a relation. Now, a graph tells us if the relation follows a specific trend, such as increasing, decreasing, or constant. So you will learn about uh, this property of uh, functions and relations in the succeeding um, videos. Now, a graph illustrates a function when it satisfies the vertical line test. So what is the vertical line test? This test states that any vertical line drawn on the graph of the relation, the vertical line must hit a maximum of one point. So in case that the vertical line will hit in more than one point in the graph, then that means the graph is only representing a relation and not a function. But if in any part of the graph, the vertical line will only hit at a maximum of one point, then we say that the graph is a function. Now, for example, in the first graph here, the graph at the left side, it's a straight line. So if we draw a vertical line here, it will only hit at the following point. And then if we draw a second line here, it will only hit at this particular point. Now, in fact, if we draw any vertical line at any part of the graph, then it will only hit at a maximum of one point. So that's why this uh, graph is considered a function. Now, for the second graph here, the circle graph, if we draw a vertical line at this part of the graph, the vertical line will hit in two points, which is more than one point. So this means that the, this graph only represents a relation. Next is um, relations and functions can also be written in terms of an equation or a formula. So that's why we can write the function as y is equal to a function of x. So we already learned from, from the previous um, slides that functions are represented by sets of ordered pairs. The ordered pairs are points on the Cartesian plane that makes up the graph of a function. Now, these sets of points may be modeled mathematically by using equations or formulas. However, determining whether an equation or a formula represents a function requires familiarization of the types of functions. And these types of functions should be discussed in the succeeding videos as well. So for equation or formula, now the following equations represent a function. We have y equals 5. It could be y equals 2 times x plus 4. It could be y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. But to give you an idea, now this y equals 5 is an equation of a constant function. y equals 2x plus 4 is an equation of a linear function, while y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 is an equation of a quadratic function. Now, the following equation here, which is y squared equals x, is just a relation, so it's not a function. So why is that so? If we're going to use the value of negative 2 for y, then Substituting negative 2 to this equation, we will be getting negative 2 quantity squared equals x, and that gives us x is equal to positive 4. So this means that when x is equal to 4, y is equal to negative 2. However, if y is equal to positive 2, we can also substitute it into this equation, and we will also get x is equal to positive 4. So in this case, we have two ordered pairs, namely 4 comma negative 2 and 4 comma 2. So these two ordered pairs have the same x coordinate. So which means that this, uh, this equation is just a relation. Okay, so since you already know the representations of functions and how to identify whether those representations are just functions are, are functions or just relations next is we need to know how to evaluate a function 
So how do we evaluate functions? So to evaluate a function, y equals fx, it means to find the value of y given a particular value of x. Also, it means to find an appropriate expression for y given an expression containing x. So we will be discussing some examples of this in the preceding slides. Now, to evaluate functions, we substitute a particular value or expression to x and then simplify it to obtain the value or expression for y. So, for example, let's consider the function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And let us evaluate the following. So, f of negative 1 first. So, f of negative 1 is computed by substituting negative 1 to every occurrence of x in the given function. So in this case, we have 2 times negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 minus 3. And then we can simplify this. Negative 1 quantity squared is positive 1. Positive 1 times 2 is 2. And then negative 5 multiplied to negative 1 will become positive 5. And then we have the minus 3. So 2 plus 5, which is 7, minus 3 is equal to 4. So this means that the value of f of negative 1 is equal to 4. Now in this example, it also indicates that the point or the ordered pair negative 1 comma 4 is a point on the graph of this function. Now 2. For the second one, let's evaluate f of 0. So similarly, we just substitute 0 to um, every occurrence of x in the given function. So since 0 squared is 0, times 2 is 0, and then negative 5 times 0 is also 0, so we're left with just negative 3. So this means that the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 3 is a point on the graph of the function f of x. And then we have f of 3. So similarly, you know, we just substitute 3 to every occurrence of x. And then we get the following. So 3 squared is 9. The 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And then negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then we have the minus 3. So we have 18 minus 15, that's 3. And then we have minus 3. That gives us 0. So that means the point 3 comma 0 is a point on the graph of 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now let's have another example. Let, let us consider this time the function f of x is equal to 3x minus 1 over x plus 2. And then let, let us evaluate the following. f of 1, f of 0, and f of negative 2. So if we have f of 1, so again, substituting 1 to every occurrence of x in the given function here, we get 3 times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2. And then simplifying the numerator and denominator, we get 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2, over 1 plus 2 is 3. So the value of f of 1 is 2 thirds, and that indicates that the point 1 comma 2 thirds is a point on the graph of this particular function. And another one is f of 0. f of 0 will be 3 times 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 2. And this will give us 3 times 0 is 0 minus 1 is negative 1 over 0 plus 2 is 2. So that means the ordered pair 0 comma negative 1 half is a point on the graph of this function. And then we have f of negative 2, so 3 times negative 2 minus 1 over negative 2 plus 2. So in the numerator, that's 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, minus 1 is negative 7. However, in the denominator, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so this gives us negative 7 over 0, which is undefined. So that means... It's not possible having an ordered pair with x coordinate negative 2. So later on in the types of functions, you will learn these things, no? how to determine which values of x 
no, uh, which values of x are not uh, possible for a particular function. Okay, another one would be, let's consider the function f of x equal to square root of 4x minus 3. And let us evaluate the following, f of 1, f of 3 fourths, and f of negative 2. So first one, f of 1. So again, just like what we did in the other functions, we just substitute 1 to every occurrence of x in the given function. So that's 4 times 1 minus 3. And this gives us square root of 4, because 4 times 1 is 4, and then minus 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and then we have square root of 1, which is positive 1. So in this case, the point 1, comma 1 is a point on the graph of this particular function. Now for the second one, f of 3 fourths. So again, substituting 3 fourths to x, we will get the following. And then 4 times 3 fourths is um, 3. 3 minus, so we have 3 minus 3. Square root of 3 minus 3 is square root of 0. And we know that square root of 0 is 0. So this means that the point 3, 3 over 4, comma 0 is a point on the graph of this function. And then for the last one, f of negative 2. So substituting negative 2 to x will give us the square root of 4 times negative 2 with negative 8. And then minus 3. So square root of negative 8 minus 3 will be square root of negative 11. However, uh, since we're talking about the square root of a negative number, then this must be an imaginary number. So since our Cartesian plane uh, consists only of points where the coordinates are real numbers, then we shall consider imaginary numbers as undefined when we are dealing with functions. And then finally, uh, let's consider the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And let us try to evaluate f of 2x plus 1. So notice that um, instead of using a number to replace x in the given function, we're going to replace x by the given expression here. So in this case, f of 2x plus 1 will be equal to um, 2x plus 1, which will replace x here. And then we're going to apply the square. And then we will be applying the minus 4. So in this case, to simplify this expression, we will be expanding 2x plus 1 quantity square. So if you recall the square of a binomial, a plus b quantity square is expanded as a square plus 2 times a times b plus b square. So in this case, we're going to square 2x, so that's going to be 4x squared. And then we're going to multiply a and b. So we're going to multiply 2x and 1. And then we multiply it by 2. So that's going to be plus 4x. And then we're going to square 1. So that's going to be 1. And then we apply the minus 4. So simplifying this and adding similar terms, we get 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. So this is the function value of f of 2x plus 1. So this ends the video about um, functions, relations, its representations, and as well as evaluation of functions. So I hope that you learned something here in this video. And please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening.